The following interview was conducted with Joseph S. Francisco, the William E. Moore Distinguished Professor of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences and Chemistry for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, May the 11, 2009 in Stewart B. 26. This is part two of the interview. The, the interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome and good afternoon. Thank you, Catherine. My so pleasure. Good to see you again. Thank you. We'll start with um, when you came to Purdue mm -hmm. as the, in the professor in Earth and Atmospheric and Chemistry. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about your teaching and responsibilities in undergrad and education and research. Okay. Uh, when, when I came to Purdue, uh, I was given an opportunity to decide uh, the courses I would like to teach. And uh, when I came to Purdue, I, I asked specifically to teach uh, the, at the freshman level, the freshman courses. And of course, uh, my colleagues in chemistry were delighted with the, with, with that response. <laughs> <laughs> we can handle that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that seemed an unusual request at the time, but um, you know, uh, I'm very committed to to the freshmen and uh, in, in giving them a good experience. This is their uh, their first exposure to chemistry at the university level. But at the same time, too, I, I feel very passionate about the, the subject and passionate to the extent that uh, I believe where we are in our society today and in the future, that uh, <clears throat> every aspect of uh, decisions are going to involve some aspect of chemistry because everything on this planet involves some chemistry. So I feel it's important for students to understand and know, know the basics of chemistry so when they pick up a newspaper and there's some policy or some law or some provision that's been passed that either affects, uh, you know, impacts their state or their community, you know, where they're living or the schools and in some way, they'll have a basic under, understanding of that chemistry where they, as good citizens of this country, can make rational decisions on their own uh, about what's best for, for, for themselves and their families and their communities. So that's why I think it's so important that, you know, we, we leave uh, an impression of chemistry that is understandable, that they can use it, uh, and that it's important for them to, to, to know this subject, uh, you know, for, for them. You know, I think there are three important areas, three important subjects that uh, students should know. Uh, how to do and do well and understand that is one mathematics you know, is part of every day you know writing reading and writing that's part of every day but chemistry is the third one as I see it as well <laughs> what uh, was this a joint appointment earth and atmospheric yeah it was time? a joint appointment okay. in earth and atmospheric uh, chemistry and it was actually one of the first uh, joint appointments where it was a 50 50 split okay. between the two departments uh, and I found that rather exciting, and I also found that rather attractive, uh, you know, uh, for me because of the, just the research that I do, which is on the cutting edge of chemistry and atmospheric sciences, and um, and so having a foot in both departments, where I have that expertise in in in, in both departments, I found very very attractive. Uh, has it lived up to that uh, expectation? Yes, it has, and then more, and and actually more than I had really thought from the standpoint that uh, the real benefit has actually been for the from the you know for the students from the standpoint that uh, the chemistry students have joined my lab, have gotten to work over in earth and atmospheric science, but it's their their ability to and their presence there of having to communicate with other students and learning from those other students about aspects of the atmospheric science that they bring that onto their own research that brings a real uniqueness to the work that that we do and so people in chemistry really appreciate just the broader perspective that our work you know has but at the same time too people in atmospheric science appreciate the broader perspective of the chemistry that we bring in mm -hmm. as well. And so that's been really one of the excitements of having that joint appointment uh, <clears throat> is uh, through the experiences of, of, of the students as well. Let's talk a little bit about your research. Uh, mm -hmm. explain, explain that a little bit for the researchers, what you're currently working on. Yeah. Well, uh, 
one of the things that we we're interested in is and just a, a sort of big picture kind of perspective is that now our basic premise if you take a chemical that you're working with uh, either in your company or in your laboratory you know or even if you're at the diner and you're making something and it just goes up in the air the question is what happens to what goes up in the air so what is really you know what happens to the chemical that's released up in the air now most people think that once it's released in the air, in, into the atmosphere you don't have to really worry about it but that's, it'll just dissipate. It'll just dissipate, and, and and so you know it's a it's a non-issue, uh, but that's not necessarily true because there there's uh, sunlight, which means there are photons. Each of those photons has energy. If the molecule absorbs that energy, what does it do? Uh, there are also oxidants up in the atmosphere, and uh, what that that what happens to that chemical once it comes into contact with that oxidant? And so our question is, how does a chemical transform itself uh, once it into, it's into the atmosphere? And now the important issue behind that is when it transforms itself, is, does it transform itself into something that's far worse than what you started off with? Or does it you know, become you know, rather innocuous? Uh, but we need to know that. And of course, that information isn't really known. In our research, what we do is we bring state-of-the-art uh, computer science where we map out all those chemical pathways from start to finish, or like some, uh, I guess the, some people like to think from cradle to death. Uh, <clears throat> and then what we also do is experiments where we make verifications of that chemistry. And that's where the real exciting intersection between uh, using state-of-the-art tools in physical chemistry with atmospheric science makes the science itself very, very interesting and exciting. Yeah. And you've got graduate students that you're working with, too. That's right? exactly right. right. So I have yeah. a good group of uh, graduate students, uh, you know, working on the problem. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of excitement. Right. Talk about mentoring. You've been doing some mentoring in your, uh, all through your years. Yes, that's and correct. And that's really key. Yes, yes. That's very, very key. Uh, and you keep in touch with them uh, afterwards? Oh, yeah. Yeah, in, in, okay. indeed. And, and let me let me tell you why I, I feel mentoring is um, uh, important. And uh, but you know, I, when I look at my own life history, I, I think one of the reasons why I've been truly successful and why I've been on this path, you know, of, of has has been because of uh, some very good mentors uh, that that I've had. You know, starting off with you know Dr. Richard Price, uh, mm -hmm. you know, which was you know, uh, a key figure, you know, in my life, and then going on to my high school chemistry teacher and physics teacher, and then my undergraduate, uh, you know, chemistry teachers at, at the University of Texas, and then uh, uh, my, uh, you know, graduate research advisor and my advisors in Australia. And and so there have been very important uh, people who have been just very central and and it's through the mentoring that I, I feel that largely why I'm here, you know, to today. So I see that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also see that, uh, in my own sense, I uh, want to give back to the community in some way. And I think one of the invaluable ways I can give back is by by mentoring in ways right. that I, you know, uh, I can work with, you know, given all the demands on, you know, on, on my time. But I always try to find creative ways of, uh, you know, how to mentor mentor kids, and and uh, you know, started when uh, <clears throat> when I was in Detroit, uh, you know, as a faculty member at Wayne State, and I wanted to try to reach in that community and have an impact, and uh, so I set up a, a student chapter at Nobuche, uh, and, and Nobuche means is. National Organization for the Professional Advancement of Black Chemists mm -hmm. and Chemical Engineers, um, and I I wanted uh, the, the the kids to know what it is to be a professional. Uh, you know, you can you can set up little student organizations that primarily just serve the students, and it becomes a little bit self-serving. But the uh, question was how to take those kids and go beyond themselves to set an expectation that was high 
that to give them a sort of a guiding point. And I always felt that sometimes when you when you're talking to people, you can tell them certain things, but it doesn't register unless they yeah. see it. And I felt that through the National Organization of Professional uh, uh, Professional Development, Black Chemists and Chemical Engineers, Nobuche, that they had a a through their professionals and how the levels that their professionals had reached, those could be, you know, bars, uh, you know, for workable bars for, for the students. So, um, you know, we approached Nobuche, which didn't have student chapters, and we actually organized uh, student chapters for Nobuche, setting out the guidelines of what students could do. And, and what we decided to do uh, in our student chapter was sort of uh, set the, uh, uh, the guidelines by, you know, what students could do. And one of the things that students did was they organized tutorial service uh, in the basement of a local uh, Baptist church to mentor minority kids in, in the sciences who were in, in high school and, and middle school you know, one day a week, and uh, it became very popular and very successful, and the, all the kids really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. And then out of that, uh, you know, my out of experience, uh, my lab actually adopted two minority kids, African-American kids, into our lab, um, and, uh, and, and the graduate students basically, well, actually the way it worked is that the undergraduate students who were working in the lab really took, you know, the high school kids under the wings sure. and really got them. Then the graduate students kicked on in, and both of them actually ended up going on to, uh, you know, Big Ten uh, universities and, you know, in chemistry and uh, being very, very successful. And that that spirit of making that really work and et cetera was one that. Uh, it was, in my own mind, reinforcing about what mentoring really was sure, all about. Absolutely. And of course, you established that first chapter, the, the National Association of Student Chapters, you just that's, said, that's, at, that's, at Wayne State. That's and exactly. Do you have one here, too, as well? Yeah. So when yeah. I came to Purdue, um, um, uh, I, I set up one here as, as well. And, and what I did uh, with the student chapter here at Purdue, I, I sort of assessed the environment a little bit. At Wayne State, they had more undergraduates and then a few graduate students. So the student chapter there was more undergraduate uh, base. But Purdue, uh, there are more graduate students. And so I uh, sort of designed the, the uh, student chapter to really serve more of the graduate students, uh, not only just in chemistry, but also chemical engineering sure. made that outreach. But it was very important with the student chapter here that it served as a a little community for, for the students uh, and where it would bring them together, they can then socialize, they can then network. But one of the things I wanted the, the student chapter here to do was to teach the, stu the, the kids how to work with themselves and how to get them through and how to mentor and work with themselves through th and get themselves through the system here. So one of the requirements is that they uh, <clears throat> they'd come together and they work with each other on cumes or when they're getting ready to do original propositions. They come together and, and criticize each other and but work to really bring the best out of out of out of out of out of each other. But for them provide a supportive uh, right. network. Uh, and so uh, it's it's turned out to be really rather good and exciting and and then some That's of the nice. cool things that they've done, they've reached back in the community and, and each each uh, each group is different over the years, and they've sure. done some very creative things. Rule number one: they've been admitted to Purdue University for a uh, for their PhD degree. So that's rule number one. And whatever they do, you know, with, with Nobuche in terms of volunteering, uh, that takes second or even third priority to their real goal for which they were admitted. So they have to have that understanding. And I usually meet with them, you know, once a year to have that understanding. Sure. But I also ask them to go and reach out in the community in their ways that they feel they can creatively contribute something to the community. Because I think it's important that students learn a sense about what it is to contribute to the community. And I often worry about 
students who come through the college and the university experience just taking course and they go back out and they have no sense of what it is to really engage in, in, right. in their community. Um, in which they're going to be living. In which they're going to be, be, be living right, in. Sure. And so I do feel that, you know, we have to try to guide them a little bit in, in that. So an example of, you know, some of the kids, what they've done is done some fundraising and then uh, gone to a local uh, uh, women's shelter and uh, the guys have actually made Thanksgiving dinner for, for the women in, in the in the local women's set, you know, uh, shelter. Uh, you know, that's, that's just one example. I have to say that's one I'm very proud of, you know. But the kids thought of this to all themselves. and they, That's the neat thing. Yeah, they, that, yeah. You sort of give them the little edge and things like that, and then they take it and can come. And then they take it and go with it. Right. Some have actually volunteered. Uh, another group have actually volunteered uh, for uh, Habitat for Humanity. They've gone out and worked to help build a house locally, et cetera. So, you know, another group have actually set up a research day within chemistry where all the undergrads or grad students who are African American or Hispanic or Indian who've done research can give a poster session within the department. You know, so they've all have done an at their own little creative bench, the, the, the creative uh, mark into the whole thing. and. And, and that's just been exciting, what that you see nice. coming in from, from, from the kids. Yeah, that's nice. Now, you're a, a biomed expert for the researchers. Do you want to just make a comment on that? Yeah, okay. well, well, actually, uh, we, we got a, an, an interesting grant uh, several years ago from NIH uh, to uh, develop an institute uh, to you know, help kids at going into this sort of uh, biomedical oh. Um, okay. you know, arena and, and area. And what we wanted to try to do was to address some of the issues about giving them a little bit of research experience, but also to give them a little bit of edge and working with skills, like they have to take a GRE, and many kids didn't know how to take a GRE, and our many kids didn't know how to even write a good uh, um, biography of themselves, to, you know, um, and so uh, we set up a little institute, uh, biomedical institute. Uh, Was that that program. summer institute? That's the summer okay, institute. That you got the money for. That we right. got the money with Dwight Lewis. Uh, sure. Was uh, you right. know, was co-PI co with, with that. That's right. right. And we were co-directors on that, and that was really fun and exciting, um, you know, as well. But that program actually made a reach outside of Purdue, all around the country, brought kids all, all in. It turns out that that program. Ended up uh, turning us a good feed into uh, minority kids into the biology department, the chemistry department as well. That was not the intention, <laughs> but uh, that's, that's what just occurred. what happened, that's you know, occurred. because they they saw just what resources they had. They'd sure. gotten that experience, and they felt very well prepared, and and they were then competitive on the whole admissions process, and and so that was the whole thing. How do we give these kids a unique experience, one on one? Uh, and uh, armed them with some really good skills in the laboratory, but also just their overall skill sets and, and, and allow them to be very competitive in the whole process for, right. for graduate school. So that was an exciting yeah. and successful uh, you yeah. know, venture as well. So it was good, but that experience had a little impact on me as well because <laughs> uh, it, it, it started me to think about our own research program that was largely focused on chemistry in the atmosphere, but from a, some of the concepts and, and things that we were learning from, from that chemistry, we saw immediate uh, uh, you know, overlap with some of the bio, biological sure. and chemical problems. And we've actually started to venture a little bit, step out of my comfort zone and <laughs> take a little bit more risk and go into some that's unique, okay. cool directions. That's so that's okay. been fun. Yeah. Now you won the uh, Hubert Newby, uh, Newby McCoy Award. Yes. You gave that lecture. Yeah. That's very, for the researchers, might just make a little bit of comments, a couple of comments about that award that you got. Yeah, well. Very prestigious. Yeah, it goes it's way very, back in time. Yeah, well, if you look at all the recipients of, 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 of that award, uh, it's, it's truly uh, an honor to just be, uh, you know, part of that, that, that group and to, to be a recipient. 
Uh, it's, it's truly, it, it's Purdue University's highest uh, research award, you know, given to, you know, right. science and engineering contributions, you know, for that, for that year. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's truly uh, a, a remarkable and, and prestigious award. So I'm, I don't know how I got it, but uh, I really appreciate it, um, and I thank the committee for it and all my colleagues who supported that. But uh, it, is tr it is acknowledgement of, um, of uh, the research and the impact that research has had, uh, you know, in, in the community uh, as, as well. And so that's, that's been really exciting to have that affirmation. That's very nice. How did you, uh, I often ask this question, how did you find out, does someone, how did you find, learn that you were the recipient? Do you get a letter or does someone touch base with you? Um, Actually, um, ooh, let me let me reflect because I, I I know once I found out I went ballistic. I I just could not <laughs> believe it. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> then it was a surprise. That, it, we'll it, take it. Take it, it at that. It, it was indeed a surprise. <laughs> it really was. Uh, I should you know I know that award is so extremely competitive. Um, and, you know, I was warned that, well, you know, it usually doesn't happen, you know, the first time around and, and uh, you know, it's because it's so competitive right. and a, a lot of deserving people don't get it as well. So, you know, just brace yourself. So I said, well, okay, you know, I, I, it's okay. But I'll boy, but boy when I got it, it was <laughs> truly, I just went ballistic. That's, I couldn't believe it. That's great. That's the way it should be then. Uh, let's talk about some of the... Um, do you still participate in your alumni association at all at any of the schools that you've gone or to, like Texas or any of the schools, any of your alumni activities? For the Actually, you know, I, oh. I have not. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they touch base with you probably. Yeah, they yeah. touch base with me. <laughs> yeah, I, they, they, they all they do. do. They all do. Even if you just attend it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, a, that's exactly right. I have the same. And, you know, they all do. I, University great. of Texas have, have recently uh, have just got in contact with me and, and invited me to participate on their, uh, I guess it was an, a, uh, an advisory board for the College of Science. Good. Uh, and so I'm in the process of thinking about, sure. do well, I have the nice. time and where do I have the time to, to, to contribute to that? But it's an honor to be been nice. selected, you know, for, for that. Uh, I, I, I guess I'm, you know, now you force me to think through this. I have actually at MIT, uh, they have in, engaged me into external uh, review uh, boards for the chemistry department there. Good. They, they were the most proactive of uh, ones. And part of the, the, the situation that stimulate that, and I'll just get this down for the record. While I was at MIT, I uh, helped organize a uh, summer undergraduate research uh, program for minority kids who are not at MIT, but n instead of being going to MIT like in your uh, senior year for research experience, push that clock back to bringing in, you know, uh, brilliant kids uh, in their sophomore and junior years, uh, starting a sophomore where they can get reinvited to the junior year. And part of the reason why I designed that uh, for MIT was to ensure that they had a pipeline of, of, of kids that they've worked with and had experience with. Uh, so when they go through the process of uh, applying to MIT, MIT has some familiarity you know, with their whole development and, right. and et cetera. So a number of kids who've gone through that program have continued on on into the graduate program at MIT. That's good. And so one of the things that MIT did was to bring me in to review, um, be on their sort of review uh, visiting committee. Uh, I was on there for about maybe six or eight years as, as well. So I, I, I've done That's that. That's very nice. And they start earlier now because by the time senior year, it's almost too late. To, it's all, it, it, in fact, it really they're is too, uh, it's too late. School, That's really. exactly right. right. That's they, exactly right. They have to start thinking along the way back. They really which have were, to start was thinking. not the case when we were growing up. <laughs> but that's where mentoring is so important. That's, right. that's where good mentoring example. is so, so important. Very good. Because if Let's they don't about, get that early mentoring, they'll miss that boat. Right. A couple of awards that I think are quite uh -huh. good. And, and one is that uh, Outstanding Teacher Award, the American Baptist Church, that you received. 
Yes. That's nice. Uh, um, yeah. Well, that was p for part of that work right. of setting up that uh, uh, yeah. uh, tutoring service. And uh, I think you mentioned uh -huh. this, but they, that Alexander Van Humboldt Research Award for yeah, tell us that, a little about that. Yeah. That, well, that was another surprise. Good. Uh, um, that um, you know, totally unexpected that 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 year, and. Uh, so with the Alexander von Humboldt uh, Senior U.S. Scientist Award, you can apply for that. So that, that's, there's no application on, on your part. So uh, you have to be nominated by a German scientist in, in, in Germany. And then he sends a process, uh, you know, fills out an application and solicit uh, letters of recommendation from people around the world and then that goes to a uh, a um, Humboldt uh, committee of uh, you know preeminent German scientists, and they select maybe about ten or fifteen people you know from from the U.S. for for these awards to spend a year in in Germany. Uh, that's another one that I went ballistic when I got because I I just uh, that's nice. It's nice to enjoy. Oh, indeed, coming, indeed. Right? Boy, you're on the you're super <laughs> high, you know. It's, it's, You'd be it's great, great at birthdays, you know. <laughs> we'll have to pick up on that. You're like me. <laughs> but I also think that one of the others that distinguished professorship that's very nice that you received. Yeah, that that really was uh, that really was very 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 nice. Because for uh, the researchers that comes from the board, the recommendation comes up to it, but the board of trustees is the one that approves. It. That's that's exactly right. Are you at the meeting when the uh, announcement is made? Do you know? Or? Yes, okay. yes, yeah, yeah. I'm at that meeting, and uh, so yeah, that was very, very special. And and what else is also special too about that moment um, was you know I was asked uh, you know how the, you know how do we want that distinguished professor named and. Uh, so I, I made a wild suggestion. I didn't know if the Board of Trustees will accept that or not, uh, but they, they did. And so I thought that it would be nice if that award was named after the first uh, uh, PhD given, you know, at, at Purdue in, in chemistry by an African American, and that was Dr. William E. Moore. And, uh, and they decided to, to do that. Now, usually these named, when they do these names, sure. it's usually some, someone has to be deceased. But he was not. He was alive. And, Is he still alive? And he's still alive. How old would he be now, then? Oh, have you ever Have you ever met him? I met him. Oh. I met him on a couple occasions, and that was exciting as well. He was excited uh, that, that uh, Purdue uh, did that. He gave us permission. Uh, that was so so unusual, but uh, he gave his permission to the, the board of trustees, and and he he showed up for for the whole naming, and and uh, and he was, he was there, and it was a, truly a special 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 Very moment, nice. and and that's something I have to say, I am so proud of Purdue University for for doing. No other university in the United States have actually named a distinguished professor ship after an African American in this in chemistry and and also from one of its alums. So wow. this is truly really a unique. first and, and, and unique uh, thing. So I was very very proud and, and, and very pleased. Uh, where does, where board does of he live? Is he still uh, in academia? He's a, yeah, he's still in academia. Okay. He's a He's a distinguished professor at uh, Southern University okay, in, down in Baton Rouge. Okay. And in, in fact, uh, uh, Purdue and Southern have a good relationship in terms of getting students. Uh, so a lot of students from Southern come up to, to Purdue. And, and I think that just sort of helped uh, sure. uh, strengthen that, right. uh, that, that, that tie through, right. through that. That's uh, very such it's truly, truly a special. Nice. And I think since this is for the archives, I do want to make sure I state this. So um, um, the first African-American PhD was actually given off in 1916 at University of Illinois. But they don't have any professorship name for, for that. Then, the, uh, then there's Percy Julian who's the first African-American 
who uh, was elected to the National Academy of Sciences, uh, he got a master's degree from Harvard, but Harvard would not admit him to the PhD program. So he went to University of Vienna and got his PhD. But he actually discovered cortisone, for, for instance. But there's no uh, hmm. PhD, no distinguished professor named in, 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 in his honor. And then there's a third generation of African American PhDs, but none have been named in their honor. So this is the first one right. named it's after It's a step African in the right direction. It's yeah, very nice. and Purdue Good. University made that statement yeah. and, and, and did so with great pride. Yeah, that's very nice. Now, the, um, we talk about a little, in the American Chemical Society, yes. the president elect, and a couple yes. of comments on that for the researchers. And we're going to follow this up after your term of office is over. We're oh, that's excellent. <laughs> I got you to say yes on the table. So you, you're going to look at me yeah, while right. I'm bright and bushy-tailed and have a great smile, yeah. and you're going to watch me come back. And, oh, I'm glad I'm, that term is over with. Okay. <laughs> no, but that's very nice. And uh, yeah. he's the president-elect, and then next year you'll be the president. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. So what would you like to well, hear about that experience? Well, you're just a couple comments that this is the beginning year before, and yeah. that uh, next year you'll be actually taking over. But now, so you're sort of a year in training or orientation. That, that's right. Yeah. So the way, way it works at American Chemical Society, uh, you're, you're elected in by uh, you know, your, the, the members. Uh, there are 160,000 members of American Chemical Society. Uh, worldwide. 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 I mean that, and that's exciting. Right. That, is. that uh, is. It is. It is a worldwide vote, um, and so um, and now to 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 get. Let me give you a little bit of sense. If this is okay, I'll sure. give you a little bit of sense of the process. Is is that is that sort Good. of Good. Go bit? ahead. Okay. Yeah. Right. So uh, a nomination committee uh, approaches a group, uh, and they rank order the people that they want to approach. Um, and they're going to come up with a slate of four nominees. Okay, so out of out of out of the, uh, the you know their slate of uh, nominees, they got to come up with four. And so uh, I was selected as one of the four. You know, I agreed. Uh, to participate. Now you don't know who the other nominees are. Okay. Uh, you know who the other three are. You don't know who the other three are um, as well until you go to the national meeting. And at the national meeting, uh, you have to go before the, the members to talk about uh, what your platform is going to be. Uh, and then the members, uh, you get into a Q&A session, a question and answer session for, you know, with the members, all four of you on the, on the platform going through that. And so that is to sort of give members a feel about what, you know, what your particular position and what are you going to do for them. Um, and then um, you have to go before council. In the council, there are uh, about 500 members of council. And you have to give a three-minute speech timed exactly to three minutes. Um, and, um, and then council will vote. Uh, you know, for uh, you know the two, and they'll rank them. You know, one and two, and the 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 candidates who have the highest number of votes, the two candidates have the the highest number of votes. Be, the, sorry, the two nominees that have the highest number of votes from council become the candidates. Uh, and so, you know, I was selected as one of the candidates. Uh, along with my colleague Joseph Mickel, who was at the University of Colorado, uh, and is a National Academy of Science member, and so the two of us became uh, the, the official two two candidates, and then the two candidates then go before the full membership for a vote, and uh, and voting lasts for uh, basically one month, and then the polls close, and then announcement is made of uh, who's, who's the winner. So uh, when I was contacted, uh, and I got to share this, uh, uh, that I was a winner, my first response was, uh, I hope you're not joking about this. It's not serious to, to joke. 
They said, no, you're indeed the, the, the winner. So I said, okay, did anybody ask for a recount? <laughs> <laughs> we have learned in today's times. We've learned in these days times ago, that if it's really close, if it's really close, you know, trust me, there will be a recount, you know, or whatever. Know. But uh, these are the times you live in today. <laughs> that's exactly right. But the the uh, you know uh, the margin was so large that there there, there was not uh, a possibility. So of course. I was uh, very excited about, still excited about know, uh, that as well. It's, it's, be, just a, it's a great, uh, great opportunity. It is you. a great opportunity. It really is a great, and it's a great honor, and it's a right. great statement that uh, my colleagues uh, in in the field worldwide has actually made, and yeah. and their confidence in me to to lead this organization. Very good, Boiler. Now a couple of things you also, and um, you you have a favorite Purdue tradition. It comes to mind that you'd like to share, or an outstanding event, or you can have some both. And then I'll leave the closing remarks to you. <laughs> <laughs> you can summarize it. <laughs> That's not uh, easy to do for you. Well, I like to you go over to lot. Harry's Chocolate Shop. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. We're in the That's, same club. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Uh, yeah, I like to bring some of my graduate students over there. You know, we have stay away from the hot wings. They're just they'll <laughs> totally kill you. So uh, I I love uh, uh, to go over to Harry's with with my students. That's one of my traditions. Right. Okay. How about outside? Outstanding event. An outstanding event. Yes, you may, you don't you can have more than one. Oh goodness, uh, at Purdue. No, any place. Any, any place. Doesn't have to be at Purdue. Oh goodness uh, gracious, uh, there have been been so many of them. Uh, that's a little hard for me to just sort of. Has one down. come to mind that you'd like to? Um. Well, you know, I'll I'll, I'll probably mention one and say, curses. I could have. You get a chance another. another time. That's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, um, one outstanding event. Uh, I'll share this. I'll share this with you. Um, on a true random experience, it was the time when I was leaving the lab uh, from MIT to go home because the experiments weren't working out, and I met a colleague. And he said, hey, I'm going over to audition for the Boston Symphony Orchestra Chorus. Uh, would you like to come along? I said, no, not really. Uh, because, you know, I've just had a real bad day, and I just want to forget about the day. He said, just come along just for the walk. You know, and you don't have to audition, but you can watch me, but this will be a good walk. And I said, OK, all right, this will be good. So I need went the over. exercise. No, I just need the exercise. So we walked over together and had a great conversation. Got there and watched him sign up to go through the audition. I went in. I didn't sign up, but I, I went in with him and just to see the experience. There was no pressure whatsoever. And um, uh, so the music director and his entourage walked on in and they pulled out Beethoven's uh, Ninth Symphony and the soloist and uh, part and you have to sing that part and and then he called the uh, those who auditioned into uh, an octet so two in each part and then they had to go through a particular passage and then you know he made an evaluation who he wanted so there were about 400 people there auditioning wow. and there and it's just 400 people auditioning for 50 spots and so at the last moment I, I said I'll try it just for the experience. And I went up and I, I auditioned just, just to get the experience. I thought it'd be maybe fun now to just try it. And uh, and then we, so me and my buddy, we were going back and we were sharing the experience. And I thought, boy, I won't, whew, I won't do that again, but that's really hard and et cetera. <laughs> and then lo and behold, uh, two weeks later, I got a letter uh, from Boston Symphony Orchestra saying, uh, uh, first rehearsal is at 7:30 in uh, Boston University. Please show up, and etc. <laughs> and um, and of course, my buddy he didn't get in. So, the <laughs> <laughs> but that was truly an outstanding yes. and awesome experience. And and that experience uh, with uh, uh, the Boston Symphony 
brought me in contact. I had a chance to work with Leonard Bernstein, Sir Colin Davis, uh, Seiji Ozawa. Um, got to, to work with some fine actors and actresses and also Martha Graham wow. uh, group uh, and doing some choreography, so some of the works. I got to sing at Lincoln Center and I also got to sing in Carnegie Hall. Uh, you know, with, with that. And so that's, that's just one just truly mm -hmm. awesome, uh, you know, experience among several others. So uh, I'll just share that. That's good. Uh, let's end some closing. If you look back yeah. and look ahead, mm -hmm. whatever you like, how you'd like to summarize, whatever you think you'd like to share with the researchers. And you've given a lot, but the closing, I'll leave it up to you. Have fun. Research. Uh, this is a truly opportunity. and. And uh, research is a lot of fun, and you'll not have a boring moment uh, doing it. Just go out there and have fun. Good. Thank you very much, Professor. You're, you're welcome. Thank you you're very welcome. much. Very good.